Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at a Sultai Emerge deck, not to be confused with the Emerge mechanic from Eldritch Moon, although it does have a similar feel to it, but today's deck was voted on by my supporters on Patreon and features the full playset of Emergent Ultimatum, the 7 mana sorcery that lets us search our library for up to 3 monocolored cards with different names, we have to exile them, and then an opponent chooses one of them to put back into our library, and then we get to cast the two other cards without paying their mana cost so Emergent Ultimatum can be an incredibly powerful card if we have a nice mix of cards to search up, which is also why we see a few different one-offs in this deck, so we can potentially search them up with our Emergent Ultimatum. And then another nice combo in this deck is that we're playing Keruga, the Macro Sage, as our companion, which potentially gives us a bit of additional card draw in the late game, but we're still getting access to some two-mana plays, thanks to the cycling ability on Titanothorax, which is going to be an 11-11 Trampler, which we can potentially reanimate and Waker of Waves, which we can also essentially cycle for one on a blue, and then look at the top two cards of our library, put one of them into our hand and the other one into our graveyard, and then it's a 7-7 that gives opposing creatures a minus one minus O, so we can spend turn two putting one of these in the graveyard, and then later in the game at some point we can maybe cast an Unbreakable Bond to return those creatures to the battlefield with a lifelink counter, or maybe reanimate them with a back for more, and let them fight an opposing creature as well, and then we can also potentially cast a Merchant ultimatum and then unbreakable bond as a monocolored card we can search up and potentially reanimate one of those creatures as well so let's take a look at the rest of the deck. Of course, because we're a Karuga deck, we don't have a ton of early action, so our deck might struggle against opposing aggro decks that are off to a quick start, although we do have a built-in sweeper here with Shadow's Verdict, which can potentially catch us back up. So besides Waker of Waves and Titanothrax at 2 mana, we could also potentially cycle a Migration Path, although we'll usually cast it for 4 mana to help us ramp towards Emergent Ultimatum by searching up 2 basics, and then we've got more ramp with Beanstalk Giant, which can first adventure with the Fertile Foot steps, searching up a basic and putting it on the battlefield untapped, which can also make a difference, and then afterwards a 7 mana creature with power and toughness equal to the number of lands we control, and then cultivate, which can search up a basic to put into play tapped, and another basic land to put into our hand, so nice 2 for 1, and then we have soul shatter as a nice removal spell making the opponent sacrifice their biggest creature or planeswalker, and we can potentially search it up with our emergent ultimatum as well. Then we've covered Migration Path, and then at 5 mana, our Sweeper of Choice is Shadow's Verdict, which exiles all creatures and planeswalkers with converted mana cost 3 or less from the battlefield, and from all graveyards as well. And despite being a bit of a reanimator deck, we don't really care about exiling those creatures from our graveyard, since we don't have any of those creatures in our deck to begin with, so Shadow's Verdict can potentially catch us back up. And the fact that it costs 5 mana isn't a huge difference compared to the 4 mana Extinction event, since we're planning to cast a 3 mana ramp spell anyway, so we should have 5 mana on turn 4, and then we also have our two copies of Unbreakable Bond, fine to just cast for 5 mana, or to search up with our ultimatum, and making an 11-11 trampling lifelinking Titanothrax is very difficult to beat for a lot of decks, and being a 9 converted mana cost card also means that it's not very easy for an Ugin, the Spirit Dragon, to answer our Titanothrax, so we can both beat aggro decks and some of the more rampy control decks that tend to win the game with Ugin, and then we also have a one-off copy of Elder Gergroth as just another monocolored card we can search up with Ultimatum, with a lot of different abilities, can also potentially gain life against opposing aggro decks, and a reach creature against flyers. Then we also have a one of Shark Typhoon, and much like Titanothorax and Waker of Waves, Shark Typhoon has a pretty low opportunity cost to include in an Emergent Ultimatum deck, since we can always cycle it if we don't have the mana to cast it for 6 mana, but it also has natural synergy with Ultimatum, since we're going to have some expensive non-creature spells that will be able to make shark tokens. And then we also have a one of Kogla, the Titan Ape, which can come down and find an opposing creature, potentially also an answer to artifacts or enchantments if it gets to attack. And then two copies of Back for More, which we sadly cannot search up with our Emergent Ultimatum, since it's a multicolor card, but still incredibly powerful as a way to reanimate one of our creatures and let it find an opposing creature all at instant speed, so it can potentially set up a nice ambush as well. 
and then our four copies of Emergent Ultimatum. There's a bunch of other monocolor cards we could consider in the deck, and one of those is Massacre Worm as a pseudo sweeper that also puts a 6 5 in play. We could play, as we've mentioned, a one of Extinction event, maybe an additional spot removal spell, or a second reanimation effect, so we can be guaranteed to reanimate one of our creatures, even if it's not with a lifelink counter on it. So there's definitely a lot of customization. And then going over the mana base, we do need a lot of basic lands to search up with our Beanstalk Giant, Cultivate, Migration Path, and our four copies of Fabled Passage. So we've got three islands, three swamps, and four basic forests. Then two copies of the Blue-Black Pathway. And then we do want some dual lands as well, because whenever you're trying to cast a card like Emergent Ultimatum, you do need some very specific mana requirements. So that's why we also have two of each temple here to complement our mana base, as well as the full playset of Zagoth Triome. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with a nice hand. Probably gonna just play Temple on turn 2, so we are guaranteed a turn 3 Cultivate. And for now I'll still play Triumph since I'm not 100% sure what I need to find with Temple. Opponent on blue-red. Alright, we'll just ramp for now. And then Unbreakable Bond can reanimate our Waker of Waves. I've got a bit of removal. Alright, so Riel. So Everwise. Yeah, that seems worth killing, so we can cycle Waker and Soul Shatter before they get to untap. And then next turn, Unbreakable Bond. Seagate Stormcaller, followed by some card draw effect. It's going to be a thrill of possibility. Discard one, draw four. Not a bad deal. And we want Cultivate or Temple. I'll take a Cultivate. Ooh, Titanothrax. So we could wait on Unbreakable Bond to get back Rex, which is a bit more threatening than Waker of Waves in this matchup. Yeah, that seems reasonable, and then we'll just cultivate, get some more lanes, and then play Temple. Do we want Beanstalk? I kind of want to find Ultimatum at this point, even though Beanstalk's just a large creature, although the point has some bounce effects. It might not be at its best. Inscription of Insights, just to scry to draw to. Although that's another card that could bounce or giant creatures. Ooh, a Merchant Ultimatum, there we go. So, just double checking my mana here, but we can already cast it as it stands. So, what do we want to get? Seems like a good matchup for Shark Typhoon. And then Kogla can fight right away. Do we have another Unbreakable Bond? We do, so that can make a life-linking Titanothorex. Although, then the second Unbreakable Bond might not have a great use anymore. So I think I like Kogla, Shark Typhoon, and then, I mean, Gargaroth could be fine too. It's a little cheaper to replay if they bounce it as opposed to Titanothorex and still plenty effective. So maybe we'll go with uh, Gargaroth. Alright, and then Kogla and Gargroth. Not bad for 7 mana. And then we still get to scry with Temple. Titanothrax would be a faster clock, potentially, than Gargroth. 
but since we've already seen inscription which can bounce our creatures i think getting the slightly cheaper one might be better and then we can maybe play karuga next turn too could have also been a good spot for massacre worm if we had it in our deck So, six mana. What's next? Stormcaller in two. Another thrill. Discards Ox of Agonos. So, it doesn't seem like they're going to be able to deal with both creatures here. And I don't mind attacking, and then Gargroth can either make a beast or draw a card. I'll draw a card. Alright, Blitz gonna kill Gargroth. Fair enough. Also exiles it, so we can't reanimate it. And a chum block. So could still go for Kiruga. Could also cycle path in case we draw another ultimatum. And then still unbreakable bond afterwards, and then next turn Kiruga. Beanstalk's also decent. Yeah, I guess we could just cast the Beanstalk Giants for seven. Not the best play if they have an inscription to bounce them both. But it does apply a lot of pressure. And it's very mine efficient too. Cycles Shredded Sails. They tapped a lot of blue mana, so I guess they're not planning on casting Inscription Kicked. Blitz for 8 deals with Kogla. And a Blitz for 9 deals with a Beanstalk. Alright. Those Blitz of the Thunder Raptors being quite effective. So is it time to Unbreakable Bond now? I think it is. I guess Titanothrax still survives Blitz for the time being. They have one left in the deck. Yeah, usually a blue-red deck wouldn't have that many answers to our giant creatures other than bouncing them, but Blitz getting the job done. And now double Crawling Barons as potential win conditions too. Sadly, Shadow's Verdict not lining up the way we want to. But maybe we'll get to see our companion in action. Alright, Cinderclasm, so I guess they do have the fourth Blitz here. Nope, Experimental Overload for 11. Making an 11-11 token. And a Blitz getting returned to finish off Titanothrax. Yeah, what a strange turn of events. So, keep Ultimatum on top. Verdict. And then... Do I play Keruga? I think I wait until next turn. Do I have the mana to ultimatum and Keruga? We're gonna be a little bit short. So I guess we just put the 5-4 in play now. Opponents also almost empty-handed, although they can still escape Ox and double Crawling Barons to animate. So I'll start by attacking. And then go for Shark Typhoon once again. Although, don't have any non-creature spells left in hand that I want to cast with the Typhoon in play. So I could just go for Rex, Bond, Beanstalk. Just get a bunch of massive creatures here. Bond's probably going to put back the Bond. 
Although I guess Bond can only get back Waker Wave since all the Titan Orthorex got exiled. But still, 7 7 lifelink isn't bad. Bowden is going to level up their Crawling Barons. Alright, opponent drew the last Blitz. So, they've cast 5 this game. That's impressive. And they're looking at the graveyard, so they're probably going to escape Ox. And we'll attack. If they animate Crawling Barons to block Karuga, we can finish it off with Shadow's Verdict. Thin out the deck a little bit. And uh, is there a reason to hold Swamp? Probably not. Alright, I've got an opponent at 8. Although they do have the card advantage going in their favor. We have searched up quite a few lands, so we do have some good top decks. Still have a few copies of Titanothrex, Emergent Ultimatum, a big Shark Typhoon. Although Crawling Barons definitely going to be an issue here. Opponent cycles through a bunch of lanes with double cathartic reunion. So we'll have to wait and see. See get Stormcaller can double their next spell. So it doesn't look like they're gonna keep up Crawling Barons, which means maybe Shadow's Verdict can do some damage. Cathartic doubles to draw six. Opponent's almost gonna run out of cards here, 15 remain. Can put them down to one potentially. Cycle Trium. Ooh, and there's Ultimatum. So let's go for it. And then what do we want to get? Can get Titanothrex, another Waker Beanstalk, or we can get Shark Typhoon, although it's gonna be hard cast instead of cycled. Definitely you take a Beanstalk. Second Waker could still be okay, my point is at 8. Could also get Shadow's Verdict to just threaten 7 damage with the current Waker. Although that's not as impressive as getting another threat. How many non-creature spells do we have left in the deck? Not that many. Double back for more could be nice. Yeah, I think I'll still go with the Shark Typhoon. Just being able to make some flying threats could be worth it. And then we'll cast the creature. Sadly, there's no way to make shark tokens with Shark Typhoon if we get it with Ultimatum alongside another non-creature spell. Opponent gonna exile their own Stormcaller to prevent uh, 7 life gained. Interesting. This is my opponent setting up a big burn spell here. 
Real for 12 power. I guess we did see Kazul's Fury earlier. So is that their plan here? Stormcaller copies their next spell. Maybe a double fling. It's gonna be a thrill instead. So they will get to draw a bunch of cards, but Shadow's Verdict is looking nice. Opponent has drawn all their copies of Blitz. So let's Verdict. Sadly, we'll have to kill our own shark, but that's a small price to pay. So we might see a Kazul's Fury kill one of my creatures in response. Could have maybe played my temple first just to make the giant bigger so they couldn't have killed giants. But opponent's at 8, so they seem dead unless they have an unsummon. Alright, sweet. Close one here. Opponent drew almost their entire deck, but uh, ultimatum got the job done. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, and our hands a little bit on the pricey side. Although, I do have functional mana with double waker to find some ramp. Definitely one of the greedier hands to keep, but I'm gonna try it for science. Usually want to postpone a decision with Pathway for as long as possible. But I will cycle a Waker of Waves here. Facing Turn 1 Island off Fabled Passage and an Opt. So unclear what our opponent's playing at this point. Take. If I take Forest and draw a 3 mana ramp card, it could be better, but otherwise, the mana fixing from Temple is probably preferred. Alright, did get punished a little bit here, but that's okay. Can just cultivate next turn and this turn. Do I want a Soul Shatter? Not especially. And then we can cycle Waker. If we kept the card on top, I would have just cycled Titan Orthorex instead. So blue red deck and a Sprite Dragon. Gonna start delivering the beatdown. Could also cycle Rex so we have one of each in the graveyard to potentially reanimate. And for now we're pretty happy casting Cultivate, so we're not looking for any specific play. So we'll cultivate, and then after searching we can play Temple to Scry. Get Forest, and probably doesn't matter too much here. Swamp. Don't need another Waker. Alright, so... If they play more creatures we can Shadow's Verdict, if not... We can... Start thinking about setting up this Emergent Ultimatum. Goblin Wizardry making two prowess tokens still die to Shadow's Verdict. And a Gargroth seems totally fine. Alright, time for Ultimatum. Getting a Shark Typhoon with Ultimatum seems great since we've got another Ultimatum to make a 7 7 Shark token the turn after. Kogla can find Stormwing Entity and then. Unbreakable Bond to make a life-linking Titanothrax. That seems good. Just double-checking that we can cast Ultimatum if we play Swamp, we can. So, Shark Typhoon. Unbreakable Bonds and Kogla. And my opponent explodes. They're gonna lose their Stormwing Entity. And Shark Typhoon 
threatens to make a 7-7 shark next turn. So yeah, sometimes games go along with this deck, sometimes games are over very quickly. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a reasonable hand. We're missing some ramp cards. So that's what we'll be looking for with our scry. Facing turn one secret keeper. So facing a mill deck. So the scry is probably not going to end up mattering here. Since they're probably going to mill me, but just in case they don't, I don't want to draw into a second verdict. Right, can cycle waker waves and look for Cultivator Beanstalk Giant. Gargoyle we can kill with the Soul Shatter potentially. So this is maybe a version playing three mana counter spells like he didn't say please. And yeah, I guess we'll take a Migration Path. And then we can end of turn Soul Shatter. Could also do it now, but then my opponent gets to use their three mana counter spell in my turn instead of having to tap out in their turn. But they will get to mill me for one more with Gargoyle potentially. And if they counter Soul Shatter, we get to resolve Migration Path. And that sets up Ultimatum and Shadow's Verdict. Right, opponent lets Shadow resolve. So they definitely have some counter magic in hand, but that's fine. If they counter Migration Path, they might not have a counter for our finishers. And our deck has a lot of finishers. Alright, so it looks like we're playing the long game here. I uh, don't really want to tap out for Emergent Ultimatum, so we'll just put Keruga in hand. And look for more action. Titan Rex will do. It's gonna unsummon their own Secret Keeper so they can mill us once again. Well, those were some nice cards that they milled. Although there's another 9 mana Titanoth. Alright, so what's the play here? Maybe just Keruga as a bait spell. Doesn't draw a card, but still a 5 4. Into the story, opponent draws four. So we'll start by attacking. And then we can cultivate. Right, I'm going to unsummon their own gargoyle. There's a tutelage. Alright, so if they combine that with an into the story, they could do a lot of damage. It's 
So if we ultimate them this turn, they're going to be forced to counter it. If we don't force them to counter anything, they're just going to probably cast another into the story, is my guess. So Shark Typhoon's an interesting twist, since we can just cycle a giant shark end of turn. So what's the play here? We've got 5, 11 mana total. So if I ultimate him for 7, can make a 2-2 two -two shark, which isn't all that amazing. Yeah, not quite being able to double spell is problematic. So into the story would mill for 8, down to 19. Can the gargoyle block? It will be able to. Yeah, I think we just pass an end of turn shark typhoon still. Alright, they just had a kick into the royal. That's not too bad. Especially since they could have also bounced my shark, although they might have another one in hand. Fountain to gain two. And another ultimatum. Now we might not have a ton of cards left in our library to search with ultimatums, so better start casting them. And we should be able to Unbreakable Bond and Ultimatum now. Right, sadly, they have another Into the Royal. So let's Bond get back Titanothrax. Alright, there's a didn't say please, and at long last we can resolve our ultimatum. This shouldn't matter which one we choose. Alright, so what do we have left? Some pretty good ones. Kogla can destroy the tutelage. Unbreakable bonds, get back Titanothrax with lifelink. And then probably just Titanothrax, or is Beanstalk Giant better? And a trample is probably more relevant. So this game, we pretty much tried to ramp until we could cast two powerful spells in the same turn to potentially get around their didn't say please. Now it might be too little too late since we don't have a ton of cards left in library. If they have an end to the story, it might be all over. But at least we tried. Sometimes you just want to jam your spells, hope to draw more powerful cards and hope the opponent runs out of counter spells. Sometimes you want to try and double spell two cards in the same turn. But there's the end to the story, that's going to mill us for eight. Four cards remain and I'm sure they can mill another four cards here. And a maddening cacophony will do the job. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a reasonable hand. Can cycle Rex on 2, Cultivate on 3, Verdict on 4 if needed. And then hopefully find some payoff cards. Turn 1 Selfless Savior. Well, having... Shadow's Verdict on turn 4 against a white aggro deck is going to be pretty important. Could have played the Fable Passage to guarantee turn 3 Cultivate. 
Although, there's a good chance we'll draw land with the extra draw from Rex. Ah, just gonna be a tap land for now, that's fine. Opponent didn't have an exceptionally fast start. Magma, sure. So it looks like a dark tribal deck. And uh, back for Morse looking quite nice too. So what do we get? Forests, islands. And then looking for Emergent Ultimatum among other things. Waker's probably good enough. Can cycle it for two mana, maybe still play a Verdict in the same turn. So we know Ta could be bad here. It's going to be a Luminous Broodmoth instead. Alright. So I'm going to have to Shadow's Verdict to get rid of the small stuff, because if I back for more to fight Broodmoth, they can just protect it with Savior. Seems okay. So pack leader, we won't really be able to ambush with our back for more since it prevents all damage when it attacks. So wondering if I should just kill the brood moth now. I guess I can do it in their beginning of combats. Broodmoth down. And a Houndmaster we can clean up with our Shadow's Verdict. Yeah, if my opponent had turned for Winota, we could have been in trouble, but I think we'll be fine now. Emergent Ultimatum can also get all sorts of cards. Or do we just want a Verdict? It's probably good enough here. Attack for 11. And then I'll cycle this now in case we find a tap land. And then next turn we can ultimate him. And maybe make a life linking Titanothorex. But yeah, my opponent has seen enough. Pretty difficult to recover from double Shadow's Verdict. And a back for more as an aggro deck. Alright, so we got to see our Soulsai Emerge deck in action, and as I've mentioned in the introduction, plenty of ways to customize it since there's so many different monocolored card combinations you can search up with your ultimatum. You could potentially remove Keruga as companion to get some 2 mana ramp in the deck. Creatureless ramp like Wolf Hollow Haven is definitely preferred since those don't get swept up by your Shadow's Verdict. And then if you introduce 2 mana ramp cards to the deck, then playing more copies of Migration Path could also be better because then you get to ramp from 2 mana all the way to 4 mana and then maybe 7 mana on turn 4 to cast your ultimatum right away. So that's kind of the dream. But yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.